And welcome to the Ruby Tuesday, my name is Ruben and this is my review for Netflix's original series, Kissing Game. At a high school in a rural, isolated, ranching community, families panic when teens contract a mysterious kissing disease that quickly spreads. This is another Netflix original Brazilian series. Um, I've liked a couple that I've seen. I've put reviews up on my channel so you can check those out. Um, if you like this, do jump in the comments below. Let me know what you thought about this. It's a very interesting um, premise which kind, of, which kind of drew me to it. And I like the fact that it's only six uh, episodes so you don't have to invest too much of your time. They're about 40 minutes an episode. So yeah, you can quite easily get through this. The opening episode is is like a party, a raunchy, almost orgy-like, um, acidelic, I'm not sure that's a word, psychedelic, drug-fueled, you know, the, the, the craziest psychedelic with, with very bright colors party. And it mingles in between um, what's happening at, at a school. The, so the first episode really gives the air of this is a very tight-knit community, kind of in the middle of nowhere. At the same time, the parents really don't like what the kids are getting up to because um, they are going to parties that they, some of the parents, especially the principal, considers to be uh, cult-like. And then there is this drug that they take during uh, the party and there is this a disease called the kissing, uh, which is why it's called the kissing game because there's a, a disease of some sort that seems to be spreading through the kids um, and to, it leads to disastrous effects. And that's kind of the premise. Although there's a lot of tangents, um, this is, there's some side stories uh, that link up at the end, which I think it does very well. As well. The kissing game has an ending that I really liked. It's one of the few seasons that I've seen recently of TV where they've managed to wrap up kind of all the storylines when you have these TV series that go off in tangents um, and they're side characters they're developing side characters as you kind of have to do you don't want to rush through your arc that's the, the kind of the, the trend that writers seem to do at the moment for TV series it still keeps to the pace of the arc which is great but it wraps everything up when it comes full circle uh, in a very clever way which I really liked I liked what they did with the characters and the side stories are really about the individual characters the individual students what they're going Going through and how they're affected uh, by the, this disease, what their families are going through. Um, there are a couple that we focus more on. Um, there's also one that deals with sexuality, which I thought was handled very interestingly. Um, it, it's handled well, but the story itself is quite heart-wrenching, I thought. Um, what stood out to me, though, I think there's two things that would stand out when you're watching this, is the acting. I think the characters that are portrayed, it's very good. Uh, I, li I really like the principal. She uh, has a, a great presence. Um, she's kind of creepy, kind of funny uh, in a way that like uh, puts you on edge. Um, and her character development, there is some that's had, and once you get towards the end, you understand motivations from this character. The students as well, they're all their characters are very obsessed with their phones, much like our generation now. And they all have this like Instagram motion, they all chat to each other online. And there's that kind of real authenticity about the characters that they develop. For me, the most outstanding thing though, is the filming um, of these six episodes. It looks fantastic. Uh, between the cinematography, the, the color palette, which is very, um, in, at times very bright with neon colors, uh, very psychedelic, obviously lending back to that party, uh, very atmospheric in places. There's a pool scene at the end, which I just loved with like mist off the top of the, the pool. The way that the use of lighting has to be commended. It's a very vibrant, interesting looking series. It's filmed, in my opinion, very well. There's very interesting camera um, shots used as well. When I was talking about the principal of the school, there's one particular shot, I think near the beginning, uh, with students and principals sitting on uh, gym balls. The camera is out and it's, it's slowly, ever so slowly, you'll have to kind of concentrate to catch it, just slowly zooms in. And as they are doing that, the, the conversation kind of gets more tense. And so you have these techniques that are used to place you in the moment, get you to feel what you're meant to be feeling. Um, and that's just a technique that uses to get, get you closer and closer and closer. And so there's techniques that are used like that throughout that are very clever. So between the color palette, the cinematography uh, and the score, which really kind of heightens the, the tone that they're going for, uh, and, and that's one of my key sayings. If the cinematography and the tone that they're going for really portrays what they need to, what the director wants you to see, then I think it's done its job well. So you have these two halves, really good acting and really good cinematography, which makes the story itself 
interesting and uh, you get behind the story. So by the time you reach the end, um, you're kind of invested in those characters and that's because of the story and the acting. Um, I do think this, the story is interesting, but it probably wouldn't have held my attention had it not been uh, for the, that acting and the way it looked. Because the story is kind of interesting, but it's what um, happens in between that story that really had me hooked and, like I said, how it looked. But then when it comes to the ending and the reveal of what this disease is, I thought that was an interesting take. I'd love to hear your points of view on this at, in the comments below. Um, do watch the credits just for a little bit. I don't think you'll miss it though. It, the, the last episode ends and then there's a little scene that kind of reveals that the fact that there may be a season two if this gets a demographic and people enjoy it. So yeah, chat to me about that in the comments below. I'm going to give this a um, solid B+. Plus. I would suggest watching it in its original language. I always suggest that because you get those nuances, the subtleties that the actors are portraying, the inflections of the voice. I think you get that more in the original language because you get the the, the body mannerisms as they speak you see the emotions that they're they are able to speak but when you have that dubbing the actors themselves aren't obviously there <laughs> they have to dub over it so you can get some of that but not all of it if it's really really done well you will get some of those emotional in that emotional intention that those actors are meant to have given given but it's really hard to put the two together and marry them perfectly so it's why if you can handle reading subtitles i would suggest do that very interesting series. I'd love to know what you guys thought. Again, fantastic uh, look of the film. Between the lighting and the cinematography, the acting, I thought it was very good. So, yeah, love to know what you think about this. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.